Hello everybody, Andrea Majewski here with Dental L Tutoring. In the video today, we will be going over a crown prep tray setup. This could be used for a bridge prep as well, but just to keep things simple, because bridges are basically the same thing as doing a crown prep, but just on a larger scale. So um, we'll be talking about the bridge or uh, sorry, the crown prep tray set up today. Um, I was just taking a quick peek. It looks like everything's here. I just took this picture from Pinterest. So these are not my pictures. I took this one from Pinterest, but I want to explain everything for you because when I was working as a full-time dental assistant, I found the crown prep probably one of the scariest procedures. I mean, not scary, but it was just so easy to forget something because I felt you had to have so much with you and it was kind of hard to learn it all step by step. So it did take me a long time, but do not be afraid of the crown prep tray setup. Yes, it looks like a lot, but you would be surprised how quickly you will catch on. So initially, what I would like to talk to you guys about is that for a crown, it takes usually two, um, two appointments. So the first appointment is the crown prep. So that is where the dentist will prep around the tooth, um, do what they have to do to prepare the tooth for that final impression, and then they would put on a temporary crown after that. And then the patient usually comes back in about two weeks to have the temporary crown taken off. And then the, the permanent crown will be um, cemented in with a permanent cement. They will check to make sure that everything fits. Sometimes they take an x-ray at that second appointment just to make sure that the crown is seated properly. And then that's it. So typically this is not done in one appointment. It takes two unless you have a CIRAC um, machine in the office which allows you to make the crown in the office and some offices do have that some offices don't but let's just say you do not and this is for a two appointment um, crown prep so initially like I said what the dentist is going to do is the usual um, you know topical anesthetic um, local anesthetic they will put on the rubber dam um, if you guys want to know more about the topical and the local I do talk about that a little more in depth in my composite tray procedure so have a look at that um, but after the rubber dam is placed then they will go to prep the tooth for the crown and a lot of dentists like to use the rubber dam um, initially for the prep because it takes time because you're pretty much shaving off um, a millimeter to two millimeters around the entire tooth. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot. Um, so there's a lot of water with that high speed hand piece. So it's a lot easier even for you if the dentist does use a rubber dam because if not, You'll be trying to retract the, you know, cheek, tongue using the high speed suction. It can just be a little more annoying, I think. So I just find it so much easier if they're able to use um, the rubber dam. But they will likely take off the rubber dam for um, the rest of the prep because you can only prep so much because the rubber dam clamp will be in the way. So after the dentist does the majority of the prep, they will take off the rubber dam clamp and then do the rest of the prep from there. It might take 30 seconds, it might take a minute, but at least they have the majority of the prep done. Um, I should mention too, sometimes before a crown prep, if there's a large cavity in the tooth, they might have to actually fill the cavity with composite or um, composite or amalgam first. So if you want to know how that works, um, then watch my um, composite tray setup that I have on that because um, it depends if the patient needs a filling or not. So you might have to set up even more. But um, anyway, so to continue on after the prep is done, the dentist will want you to cut a retraction cord, which is over here. Now, retraction cords do come in different um, um, thicknesses. So the dentist will tell you the thickness that they want. Um, zero, zero, I believe is the smallest thickness and every dentist is different. I have seen them use the tiniest one and then I've seen them use the largest one. So you just don't know what they want to use, but they will tell you. Um, some dentists also place this gingival retraction cord 
in a solution of, it's called Hemoseal. I couldn't find a picture of that, but that's just basically a vasoconstrictor in a liquid. And that will help to stop the, uh, the bleeding around gums. Now, they don't always put it in that um, hemoseal solution, which I'm sorry, I don't have that picture here because I couldn't find a picture of it, but sometimes they do. So if you happen to see that and you're thinking, what is this solution? Well, that is what it could be for. But again, they don't always use that. But you want to hand this um, retraction cord to the dentist using um, the cotton pliers or the um, um, uh, forceps, <clears throat> depending on what they call it. And then they will either dip it in the hemo seal that I had just talked about, or they will place it into the sulcus. And then you want to pass them the um, gingerville cord packer. And that's what this is here. So I did get a, um, a larger picture for you just so you could see, because it was really hard to see kind of what it looked like from here. Now in my office, we just use the, the PFI. So the plastic um, filling instrument, because um, basically the same shape and it just sort of prevents us from, from using a different instrument. But most offices do have this gingival cord packer, but just in case you don't have that, if you see an instrument that has this kind of an end to it, that will work okay. And then just pass that to the dentist after they um, place the retraction cord into the sulcus. So the dentist um, takes a couple minutes to carefully pack this all the way around the tooth. This is not easy. Um, it can take a couple minutes or it can happen right away, but they need to make sure to pack that all around the tooth so that the gum against the tooth is being pulled away. Um, and that will make for a much better final impression. Once they're satisfied, they have to make sure that the gum is not um, bleeding at all, because if it is, they will not be able to take a very good final impression. So that takes time, which is why usually the retraction cord is placed in a hemoseal type of solution to stop that from happening. But once they're happy with that, they will want you to pass them the light um, body impression um, material first. Now the light body impression material, um, you might not have these this whole contraption in your office. Every office is different. Sometimes I've seen this type of thing that you leave on the counter and then you just have to load up the light body in there and then you push a button and then you would load it into the syringe that way. Um, or this is usually what I see, but depending on what your office is, hopefully the other dental assistant in the office will be able to show you. So if this is the case, um, these cartridges come separately and then you have to load it into um, the gun here. And the light body, you would want to load up into a syringe, which I do not see that here. Let me go find a picture quickly of what that would look like. So one moment. There, everybody, sorry, um, sorry about that. So I did find a couple different images for you. So the light body, you want to load into a syringe like this. So you would take the top off and then load it in. Um, I wish there was a better way I could explain that, but that's just kind of something that has to be shown to you. So hopefully you learned that in school or the dental assistant in the office will be able to show you that. So the light body is, you know, always going to be first because what the dentist does is you would pass them the syringe with the light bodied in it and then they would put the light bodied around that crown prep. So I just kind of um, found this picture here. So this is showing the lower arch. So they would put the light body with the syringe around the tooth. So inside the mouth that goes around the crown prep. And then quickly, so this has to be done fast, um, no pressure, <laughs> you have to load up either the medium body or the, um, either the medium or the heavy impression material um, in the gun, but onto the entire tray. So this tray will be empty. And then you have to load up, and I say either medium body or the heavy, because it depends on what the dentist wants to use. I've seen either or. Um, just in the picture here, it's not showing the medium, it's only showing the heavy. So what that is done is, um, 
um, you would load up the entire tray quickly and then pass that to them and then they will put this um, impression tray with the uh, impression material inside the mouth. They let it sit there for a couple minutes and they take it out and then it looks like this. So the light body is um, always a different color. Now, I quickly just wanted to mention, so sometimes for the light body, they would not use a syringe, but they would just use a different tip. I have seen it both ways. So that's why I just kind of showed you the syringes too. Like sometimes they just want to use the tip, but if they don't purchase those extra tips, then they'll need to put it in a, in a syringe like this with a thin tip because they want that light body around the crown prep. So does that make sense? Um, so after that, then they can make the temporary crown. So um, this is where this impression comes in handy. Um, actually, you know what, you guys, I forgot to mention something. At the very start of the appointment, I apologize. At the very start of the appointment, you will likely be taking alginate impressions, not always, but usually. You will be taking alginate impressions of the top teeth and of um, the bottom teeth too. And that's because it just makes it easier to send that to the lab and the lab can see how the teeth, um, how, the, how the tooth and the teeth looked before the crown prep and also how the top teeth and the bottom teeth fit together. So that's why you will typically do that First. But another thing I completely forgot to mention was after you take the Elgin impressions, you will want to take a bite impression of where that, that crown um, will be um, and a bite um, registration as well, which I don't have a picture of that. So let me go find that. Okay, guys, sorry. So for the bite at the beginning, you want to use a tray like this. Um, so before the dentist does the crown prep, you have to make sure to load up. The bite registration will be in a similar cartridge like this, and it's usually clear. Um, and it's just usually called bite registration. So there's, there's no other like name to it. You would load it into the gun, load it here on the um, top, and then you would load it on the bottom too. So, so this is, um, either side so the top and the bottom and then you would put that into the patient's mouth of where that crown prep is supposed to be um, ha have them close for like 10 seconds and then um, have them open and then you are all set because this will be then used to make the temporary crown at the end because you want to put on the um, temporary crown in the shape of obviously how the tooth was before. So if you don't remember to take this impression at the beginning, um, you really, it's gonna be a lot harder for the dentist to make a temporary crown because if you don't have how the teeth looked before, this just makes it a lot easier for them to put in that temporary crown material into this impression. Now, Sorry, I'm going to stop the video again because I want to try to find what this looks like for you guys in case you haven't seen it before. So go take a break and I'll be right back. Okay, so this was the best one that I could find. So this would be the impression. So this um, impression here. Um, and then this temporary um, crown material is in a cartridge like this too with a thin fine tip. So it is usually orange. So that would then be put here. Um, this looks like actually it's a bridge prep that they're doing because you see it on three different teeth. So for a crown, let's say we're just doing the one crown, it would just be in the one area, okay? Um, so the dentist will usually put this in and then they will put this back inside the mouth in that area of where that tooth should be. Um, because then this will make a temporary crown in the, sh in the shape of that tooth, how it was before. I did try to find kind of a picture of a temporary crown just so I could show you guys, but believe it or not, I couldn't find one. So hopefully you had seen this in school, but if you're really confused, then just make sure to comment below so then I can help you guys out more with that. And, uh, and, and I can always look a little bit harder too, but I just couldn't find anything. Oh, oh you know what? I just found something. I was just kind of looking on my opposite monitor while I was doing that. 
So can you guys see this? And sorry for all of the images here. So this is the final product. So this is what it looks like after it's been set in the mouth and then the dentist takes it out of the mouth. This is what it looks like. So, so then the dentist will take, this, um, will take this off and then load up their temporary cement also in a gun, usually two, sometimes not. Sometimes it's as a catalyst and a base and then you have to mix it up and then put it in here. Um, some dentists like a thin amount, some dentists like a, um, a lot. So I would just ask them what they, they want, or they might mix up the cement themselves and then place it themselves. So I don't know, everybody's different, but this is kind of what the final product looks like. And then they will cement this inside the mouth and that's it. Um, they will cement it. They don't usually have to light cure it or anything. They'll cement it inside the mouth and then they will take off the extra cement, usually with an explorer because you do have to clean up sort of around the tooth. They'll likely check the bite after that, but it probably doesn't need too much to be changed. Um, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But the dentist has to be careful because this is a temporary cement, or sorry, a temporary crown material. So if you try to change it or if you try to adjust it too much, um, it might crack, right? Because they're not supposed to last more than a couple weeks, a couple months at the most, but they're meant to last um, the best answer a couple um, a couple weeks because then you assume that the patient will come back to have the permanent crown um, put inside the mouth. So um, so yeah, so that's it for the crown prep procedure. If you guys have questions, please comment below. Um, but I will quickly say for the second appointment, when the patient comes back to get their permanent crown seated. Um, the dentist has to take off, obviously, the temporary crown. Sometimes they're still stuck in there pretty good. So sometimes the dentist does have to cut into that temporary crown with, um, with a high-speed handpiece and a burr. Or they might use crown and bridge scissors to kind of trim around it and then try. But these are kind of hard because... These aren't meant to go inside the mouth, but I've seen dentists, you know, do that sometimes, but they take the um, temporary crown off. You can even ask them what they want to use to take off the, te the um, temporary crown because there are like temporary crown bridge um, removers, I guess is the right word. So they might want to use that too. And then they will wash and dry the tooth really um, uh, quite well. And then they will put the permanent cement into the permanent crown. Now, they will likely, though, try in the crown first before they permanently um, cement it in because they want to make sure that the crown fits properly. So I, sh I should mention that too. But that's at the second appointment. Um, and then they'll obviously check the bite and then the patient's all set. So usually the first appointment, so the crown prep takes about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on the dentist. A, um, the second appointment to bring the patient back takes about 20 minutes, maybe, maybe half an hour, maybe more, maybe less. It just depends on the dentist, but there are usually two appointments with that. Okay, guys, I think I have everything on here. I forgot to mention the shade guy, but that's kind of self-explanatory anyway. You want to check the shade of the teeth. Um, so that you can tell the lab what shade that crown is supposed to be. So I did forget to mention that. But if you guys have any questions, make sure to comment below. Um, if you like this, make sure to also um, click like, so that way I know that you guys are liking these and you would like me to do more. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.